fascist and skills they are. Let me come, bro. You underestimate my power! If it was real. What if lightsabers were actually real? Maybe even a good blaster from your side. Or even Iron Man suit. The science of science fiction. What could work, what could not work. We talked about this on a podcast. But if only there was some kind of Star Wars-esque transitional wipe that could take us there. Gentlemen, this is uh, Lombardi Labs. I am uh, JD Lombardi, sixth grade science teacher who uh, puts these things together but along with G.L. Lambert, um, who co-produces it with me, and good old friend from college, Eric Montoya, is a um, Star Trek geek. Where's your pin, Eric? Oh, yeah, where's your pin? Oh, show oh, your pin. There you go, there you go. Real science, my he, friends, real he got, science. We'll get into that later. But one thing you always hear about is, can these things be real? Now, I mean, this is a real polycarbonate rod, metal, shock response, but a lot of people say, does, the science of a lightsaber could actually work in, in, in the real world. It can. Gary, Gary here says it can. Absolutely think, think about not. It. If you got a laser and you got a sword, it becomes a laser sword. <laughs> science. The latest, uh, from what I understand, is that a laser continues until it actually hits a solid object. Or not, I mean, it can go through water and, and refract and all that. but. Um, the problem is with these lightsabers, it's like, it just knows when to stop at a tip, and it's like, come on. And the, the other problem is, if you had an actual laser in your hand, how hot would that be just generating to you? Even if you had a guard, a, a gloves on, yeah. it would the heat to your face burn would off your hand. Yeah, easily. And you would go blind just looking into a, a laser this close to you. I did see a recent headline about how it could be possible, and after reading it, I was like, I don't know if I'm convinced, because it's, it's like you what need it something to... Well, it's the idea that you could, if you have the razor, the, the razor, the laser repeat, the kind of swore. go back up and down on the feedback loop, but there's going to be a cap of some kind. It's not going to be just the tip of a blade, of a light blade. So, I don't know. But The, the better thing is, like, why, why, would you, you ever, yeah, why, why would you ever need a, 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 a lightsaber? Wait, wait, why even bother with that? It's like, yeah. you can have a, a, we need a blaster gun of some gun. kind. <laughs> Which we're going to get into later, hopefully, if we have time, but... Um, People don't even fight hand-to-hand -hand combat anymore. Yeah, who's like, fighting with real swords? Except for fencing. You could have laser fencing. But what's the point? Because it looks cool. I guess just for show. But as a practical weapon of a Jedi or anything, it's, it's not going to work. I mean, as Indiana Jones already proved that, you know, a gun outweighs a sword. Every yep. time. Classic moment. Eric here was, was talking some smack earlier about how Star Trek is better than Star Wars. I don't know what he means by that. We're all fans of, of both, I think, but what's, what's your what's I mean, your I mean, in terms of, like, science fiction tech that has inspired real-life tech, I mean, nothing beats Star Trek at all. I mean, the cell phone, for example, was inspired by a communicator. Mm. Uh, you have replicators uh, inspiring... Bluetooth. Yeah, uh, Bluetooth, exactly. You have replicators inspiring 3D printing, um, personal computers. You have the, I mean, even even the, the view screen on the bridge is a giant flat screen TV. I mean, yeah. it there's, goes on and on. There's a lot. You said you, you met actual like uh, engineers that have been inspired by Star, Star Trek, right? Yeah, no, I mean, there's like pretty much any engineer or scientist at NASA JPL says Star Trek. And, you know, the younger ones is going to be like around our age, younger meaning like, 40 somethings, but um, it's gonna be next generation. Yes. Then the older, older farts are really gonna have um, uh, be inspired from the 60s original show. And so I think, I thought I remember like Motorola or someone like they did the flip phone as oh, because yeah, yeah, yeah. someone who designed yes, yes. the original Motorola flip phone, flip, 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 flip phone was inspired by the Star Trek communicator. Right? Absolutely. A little yes. noise. Yes. So Star Trek, Star Trek's given us all those things you talked about, and what has Star Wars given us besides a sword <laughs> that doesn't light up? Well, I want to say something positive. At least it inspires people, inspires kids to be like, "Hey, I want to go to space. Hey, I want to learn more about it." And so, to play with fake swords. And to play with fake swords. But I see it's it, <laughs> and to what be about um the the warp drop, that the um the, the space jump, like that's real. No. <laughs> he's, he's not serious. Um, <laughs> 
you know, Star Wars, uh, they jump around. I think the early on was they say light speed, and then they said they hyper speed. speed. Yes. Which is kind of like yeah. trying to... Yes. Because light speed doesn't even make sense. The closest star system to us, for example, uh, the Alpha Centauri system, Proxima Centauri is about 4.2 light years. So even if you can get to light speed, it didn't take you over four years. And I hate to admit when Eric is right, but he's right in the sense that at least a warp drive makes more sense because it's warping space-time itself and allowing you to go beyond the speed of light, right? It's, but like yeah. you're not breaking the laws of physics. Nope. Because there's this weird thing that a lot of people don't know that it, Einstein figured out that the, the closer you approach the speed of light, the more mass you accrete. It's, it's an oxymoron. It's not going to work. It's, it's, I don't know. So you would have to warp space time, which sounds like almost impossible. So far, it's impossible. Um, then there's the idea of wormholes, which yes. also, I hate to admit, Star Trek did in Deep Space Nine. And the idea of those who don't know wormholes, is a, it's theoretical. It's not real. There's no proof of it yet. But if, say this sheet of paper is the uh, fabric of space-time. This is point A, this is point B. Instead of tr traveling traditionally, you just fold the paper, fold space-time, and those two holes meet. It could work in theory, but... And then with Star Trek, the way Deep Space Nine did it, it was like, it was always in this one area, it wasn't... Which would make sense. If you're gonna have this rip in space-time, it wouldn't be traveling, it would be, you have to go to that, and then you can get a shortcut. So we can all agree that Although Star Wars and Star Trek has um, sparked our imagination in terms of traveling far distances in space, it's not one of the texts that we're talking about as far as has been inspired by um, those uh, movies of pop culture. It's just one of those, it's still a pipe dream in terms of that stuff. Oh my God, yeah. So what I mean, are, yes. so what are some other things? Mar Mars is with, uh, real quick, Mars is within our solar system. And even in an ideal window, you're looking at six to eight months travel time. Mm -hmm. Six to eight months. Since space travel, space travel was kind of still a pie in the sky dream. What are some thing, other things besides um, space travel that we can talk about that has been predicted by these movies? Ion engines. So back in '77, the first Star Wars movie had the Tie Fighter, and some geeks out there might know Tie stands for Twin Ion Engine, which I think was only in development. It wasn't real, but now NASA uses real ion engines. I mean, they're not like super fast, it's just the idea that they're really efficient. And so it's just firing out a little st steady stream of ions and that kind of propels the spacecraft slow, but steady. And so that was real. Score one for Star Wars. Oh. 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 I mean. Now, did you break it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> did I get it? Sometimes it needs a little, 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 little even flow. Your, even your fake Star Wars tech works. Look at that. Um, I think we should change the subject. A lot of people talk about Iron Man's suit. You know, from what I understand, the suit itself is not, you know, it's exo armor. It's not that Who would problem. Who It's Iron Man or the Rocketeer? Ooh. Think about that. Ooh. Because Rocketeer has real tech. I've seen those things. Yes. yes. <laughs> Did not see those things. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay, if that's true, how does he not burn the back of his legs off? Strong legs. He works out. He's in the gym. That's not strength. Science, it's science, burning. Well, science works in mysterious ways, isn't it? I mean, sometimes, you know, you have to, like, just go with it. It's fun and nostalgic, but Iron Man's suit could theoretically work if you had an almost inexhaustible source of energy. And that whole arc reactor he has in his chest, oh my gosh. It's suggesting cold fusion, which is like the holy grail of physics, but I mean, it's like, how do you create how do you create the energy that stars create without melting everything nearby? And like that's why I use the term gauntlet. cold, cold fusion, and it's like kind of an oxymoron as well. So it's like I don't know. None of that's never going to happen. But about, we do. We need Captain clean America's energy. Shield? It would be clean. Can Captain America shield up be real? How about vibranium? Well, vibranium is not a real element on the periodic table. So how about no. ad how about adamantium? Also not. <laughs> well, that's an alloy, right? Yes, it is. What's the hardest metal um, on Earth? Ah, uh, tungsten. And could you make a shield like Captain America's shield out of tungsten? And it's tungsten has the highest tensile strength of any natural metal, but it's brittle and tends to shatter on impact. Yeah, we can't use that. Oh. Yeah. Let's talk about blasters. Now, it seems kind of backwards and archaic that we're still shooting metal out of guns. And, you know, it's not, not endorsing guns or anything like that, but, you know, it's... Hey, this police officers, is military. paid for by the NRA. <laughs> In the colonial days, they were shooting metal balls with gunpowder, and we're still doing the basic same thing, just a lot faster and more efficient, blah, 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 but it's still lead. And so, um, traditionally, if you have some kind of laser gun or cannon, it would just get too hot. It's so energy dependent that it wasn't efficient. But 
as of new news, there is something called um, a directed energy weapon, DEW, D-E-W. And uh, what, the Navy, you said the Navy is actually... Oh, yeah, actually... the Navy is actually uh, developing it now for use um, before the year, the year is out. And Israel. I remember um, Israel and... Uh, whoa! whoa! Well, uh, the thing better than Star Trek is coming on. And... Uh, <laughs> sure, you could try it out. Right there. A Force Awakens. So, uh, the worst Star Wars film since The Phantom Menace is now playing. <laughs> so, if you guys want to come on down, well, it's not live, so it doesn't yeah. make a difference. But anyway, you come down now, it'll be over, but it'll be cool. It's awoken. We can just do a riff trap, trap over the whole movie. Only to be trumped by The Last Jedi. Star Trek rolls! Exactly. <laughs> Name you are. Okay, okay, okay. I have no power, I'm sorry. You're the master and I'm just a sorry little Sadawan. Until next time. Oh.